Turns it upfield. Touchdown, Alabama. 15-10-5. Touchdown, LSU. Touchdown, Damian Harris. He's in trouble. It's LSU and Alabama. College football doesn't get much better than this. No, it does not. And that brings us to the Home Depot SEC on CBS. And our primetime matchup tonight, the number 19 Tigers of LSU against the number two team in the country, the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Bryant-Denny Stadium, where the Tide has won 31 of its last 32. There'll be about 102,000 on hand for this one tonight. College football playoff rankings came out on Tuesday. Much to the dismay of a lot of people in this part of the country, Alabama not number one, but number two. Georgia number one, and Georgia beat South Carolina today. They're already heading to Mercedes-Benz Stadium as the East champions in the SEC. But first things first, in the SEC West, LSU still controls its own destiny. If they can pull an upset on the road tonight, Alabama, of course, trying to cruise into Atlanta on December 2nd as well. And we welcome you, everybody, Brad Nussler, along with Gary Danielson. Partner, a month ago, the folks in the bayou were not happy. But after a win at the Swamp, a come-from-behind win at home over Auburn, and then taking care of business against Ole Miss a couple of weeks ago, here's LSU number 19, Alabama number 2, and it's a, a, a you know, knockdown drag out again. No, I, I agree. I mean, we all kind of left them for dead, right? And then October comes back. We saw them against Florida. And now they come back here. Two years ago, it was humiliation here. They are dying to play their best game against Bama, and it probably will take their best game. Alabama, we're used to them being number yeah. one on defense in most categories, and they are, but they're also number one in the conference in offense. And you know why? It's the same formula we've always seen from these Bama teams. Ed Orgeron said it's the best rushing team he's seen, but it's a little different because they go with a lot of weapons, whether it's Damian Harris or Bo Scarborough or the true freshman Najee Harris or last year's leading rusher for Alabama in this football game, Jalen Hurts. Alabama runs the football. They love to make it physical. That's been the storyline. And when Jalen Hurts wants to pass, LSU wants to get their best defensive player after it. Yeah, I, I really think that's it for LSU. Their stars have to be stars in this game. And that starts with Arden Key. He's healthier. We saw it against Ole Miss. He's got that pop in his step. He has to be a factor when Bama has to throw the ball. Speaking of factors, can the LSU tailback make a difference? LSU believes their quarterback can't do it without help from that guy right there. Last year, Alabama held LSU to 33 yards on the ground. They're going to have to do better than that tonight. And here come the Tigers of LSU riding a three-game winning streak. And the team that's beaten them six straight, the second-ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama. Moments ago, third member of our team, Allie LaForce with Nick Saban. Coach, LSU has a very unique style of offense. What's the biggest challenge in stopping them? Well, I think everybody being disciplined to do their job on the perimeter to get the right support. The inside players got to read the right things. You can't get influenced by all the shifting motion, eye candy, we call it. So it's, it just takes a lot of discipline for everybody to execute and do their job. We are officially into November. What do you still need to see from your team to finish in championship form? Well, we got to overcome hard. You know, we haven't had anything hard yet. So we need to overcome hard. Tough game. See how we respond when your best is needed. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Right, thank you. I actually do think that's the, the real call, Brad. We've done these games, and there's always been a clutch play late that Alabama's made. A.J. McCarron, the screen pass, they've made the late plays to win this game. Well, they've won 22 straight conference games as we go back to Alley. Coach, you're facing an Alabama team who has lost once at Bryant's Denny Stadium the last 33 games. How do you do what seems to be the impossible here in Tuscaloosa? We got to believe. We got to believe in each other. We got to play LSU football. What a great atmosphere. We're ready for the challenge. You said Alabama has one of the best rushing attacks you've ever seen. What will be key in limiting their effect? You know, the execution, the backs run the ball very hard, very well coached. We got to stay in our gap. We got to attack. Good luck, coach. Thank you. I can't believe he didn't say go Tigers. <laughs> First time. His Tigers won the toss, deferred. Alabama will receive. Cameron Gamble has got it teed up. 71 degrees, beautiful night. The 82nd renewal 
of the Tigers and the Tide. Trayvon Diggs and Henry Ruggs back deep for Alabama. If this doesn't get your blood flowing, nothing will. Kicks returnable from the nine yard line by Ruggs. Across the 25, out to about the 26 yard line, and that's where Alabama will go to work. So we take a look at the Chick fil A starting lineups, and it all starts with the sophomore quarterback, Jalen Hurts, right about on his numbers as far as completion percentage from a year ago. 15 total touchdowns. Sometimes has a little inconsistency with his accuracy, but man. Can he make you miss when he's a running back? Yeah, and he's a different quarterback this year because the plan of attack is allowing Jalen to throw the ball over the middle. Will they do it against this good LSU defense? That's the question. As Gary said a year ago in the fourth quarter, he put the team on his shoulders, and that's how they won 10 0. First snap from the 26, and it's Damian Harris. And Harris goes out for about five. As we take a look at the rest of the offensive lineup for the tie Jonah Williams will have his hands full. He's one of the best in college football, but he'll be lined up against Arden Key a lot tonight. Alabama goes with tempo right off the bat second and five. Hurts running out of time and down he goes back at the 20 yard line. Devin White and Christian Lockature in on the sack. LSU's defense, you can pick out some guys there. Corey Thompson's one of the guys that makes a big difference as far as rushing the quarterback and is one of the guys, Brian Dable, the offensive coordinator for Alabama, said, I'm as worried about him as I am Arden Key. Yeah, I thought that was a coverage sack, though. But LSU plays man-to-man -man and challenges you to find the right guy. They won't be wide open or against man-to-man -man coverage. Tigers look like they're going to bring a blitz. They will. It's Thompson coming from the outside. Hurts down the middle, got his man. It's going to be short of the first down as he got it to Foster, but he's about a yard shy. And that's the difference. LSU made their run when they decided to go to man-to-man -man coverage. They have challenged their three corners. Jackson, Tolliver, and Greedy Williams. One of them's just a true freshman. The other two have seen three years of SEC football. That's exactly how LSU wanted to start, a three and out. And look at when you kick it to that guy. We've seen what he can do. DJ Chark has two punt returns for touchdowns this year as J.K. Scott will kick it away. But J.K. Scott has not had a punt return of one of his punts this season. And he won't have one here either. Chark will almost lost it as he stumbles backward around the 10 yard line. And they're actually going to spot it at the nine. As we take a look at the Chick-fil-A starting lineup going the other way and it starts with their quarterback the senior Danny Etling making his 19th start for the LSU Tigers after starting a lot of games at Purdue before came coming in here. We've seen him do some good things the last couple of weeks here. Yes and he's healthier this year than he was a year ago to be honest. When we talked to Coach Ogeron, he thought he was shaky last year. The word he used all week is we have to protect Danny. The Tigers start from the nine yard line. Shovel pass incomplete. Or we have a penalty. I, I don't think they got a start. <laughs> start seven. Offense. Five yard penalty. Half the distance to the goal line. First down. DJ Chark with a false start, so they're really backed up now. As you take a look at the Tigers offensively, you're going to see a lot of John David Moore and Moreau, the other tight end, shifting back and forth in Matt Canada's offense. They'll go from side to side, and usually those tight ends will lead you to where the ball's going to be, but not all the time. Wow, big time I bet on balance right and they come back only had one player to the right of the center. Now they have two. Just inside the five. There is Geis. And a good game for Geis. Against the Alabama defense that only gives up 66 yards a game on the ground. Rashawn Evans, one of two tied players that's on the semifinal list for the Buckers Award. 
And we've nicknamed him Dr. Evans, right? Dr. Evans. Because he was telling us how he gives his own treatment to his groin, in groin injury. <laughs> he headed up the whole process. He had one two years ago. He had one this yes, year. Yes, he knows exactly what he's doing. And he's healthy. And when he's healthy, he's a difference maker. Second and nine. Shovel inside goes nowhere. Uh, there's the difference maker. Yep, the doctor. And he just operated on Moreau for no game. When you turned on, I watched the Pitt Clemson game from a year ago as you watched the shovel pass inside. The reason I did is Matt Canada upset Clemson as the offensive coordinator for Pitt a year ago. And out of the first 12 plays, they ran three shovel passes. I have a feeling Nick Saban watched the same game tape. <laughs> and then some. Yes. <laughs> LSU with a third and nine, the 36 percent on the third down conversions. Russell Gage, the motion man. Etling, here comes the heat. He got rid of it. Jump ball, and it's complete. Wow, what a throw. Stephon Sullivan. I tell you, when you're going to throw the ball against Alabama, you know you are going to get pressure. You know when you let go of it, you're going to get hit. But Danny steps into this. It was Dr. Evans again who did it. Yep. But it was delivered perfectly. And a quick snap. Swing pass out to Geis. He stood up and still standing. Gain of about two. That last pass play, 31 yards from Etling to Stephon Sullivan. Well, the previous pass, they bunched this Alabama defense crisscrossed. Tough to play man-to-man -man coverage with those three guys bunching and going in different directions. So LSU's gotten out of the shadow of their own goalpost out to the 44-yard line of Alabama. Second and seven. Again, Gage in motion. Play fake. Etling wants a home run. Long ball, man out there, and incomplete. Some incidental contact. And Minka Fitzpatrick, oh, brother, he goes down. And he's holding Ooh, his left the, hand Probably straight. the most important player for this Alabama football team is Minka Fitzpatrick. He's the quarterback of the defense. He gets everybody in the proper spot. And, of course, he's got experience as corner and safety he doesn't panic but he sure looks like he pulled up there doesn't it looks like a left hamstring he grabs it right there and remember he is in this defense the safety in their regular package he's the slot corner in their nickel package and he's the dime linebacker in their dime package he's the whole deal he's trying to run it off Again, he was trying to make up ground on Chark. I don't think there was any interference, and maybe it was because he pulled up. Just a note, Darius Geis wide open after the play. Look at this. After he takes the fight, nobody covers mm. Geis. Mark that down. And had that ball been a little bit farther in front of Chark, it might have been a touchdown. As it is, third and seven. Williams in the backfield with Etling. Here comes the pressure from Alabama. Etling pump fakes once and uh, throws it away. I, I, did that get across the line of scrimmage? No, it didn't. I don't know if it did get across the line of scrimmage. He was out of the pocket, and the ball has to get passed. He was throwing it to Williams, or at least attempting to show throw it in that direction. Did you see someone there? Because I don't know if I, I saw anybody. I think 28 was there, but let's see. Williams now just going to try to, well, he was oh, boy, that was very, very good break for LSU because that could have easily been called intentional ground. You can see the blue line. It was not past the blue line. Von Rosenberg to punt. Xavier Marks late fair catch and takes it at the 10-yard line. So almost five minutes in. Neither team able to score so far. At Bryant Denny in Tuscaloosa. So Alabama has to work from its own 10-yard line. Bo Scarborough in the backfield for the first time. Throws on the run and throws a strike to Calvin Ridley, the aforementioned wide receiver, his favorite target. Well, we talked about Jonah Williams doing the job at left tackle. He's got the matchup right here. Watch him. 
He pulls, not really pulls him down, but he swipes Arden Key's hands away and allows Jalen Hurts to get up in the pocket and throw that ball over the middle. Jacobs in there, now spreads out as a wide receiver. And it's Scarborough behind Hurts. First down at the 24. Straight give to Bo off the right side. Got about three. Well, they've had some crazy games over the years, and that's just another. Do they have different rules in that conference? You might, or about defense, you mean? I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> Here's Hurts. Pressure coming. Can he get away from it? He got away from one man, and now he's heading to the sideline, and he's going to get a first down. And that's what Jalen Hurts can do so well. well. I'll tell you, John Battle would like that one over again. He had another defender with him attacking Hurts, and he gets by two players here. Devin White Devin, was the Yeah, guy. the best tackler in the league. They needed to pinch Jalen Hurts there. It would have been the third negative play of the game for this Alabama offense, and that's an escape that's hard to believe. And another first down for Alabama. John Battle was jumping up and down on the field, so mad at himself after that miss. Hurts. Plenty of time. Going to air it long. Man there. Got him. Complete to Henry Ruggs. And for Henry, that's his first catch this year that hasn't been a touchdown. Well, he had Ruggs or Judy on this place. Judy's going to go inside. Ruggs is going to go the other way. A double post. Man-to-man -man coverage. Both of them were wide open. And as you say, Ruggs just ruined his streak. <laughs> I think he'll take it, right? He said to Calvin Ridley yesterday, if you told Ruggs that not every catch is going to be a touchdown, he might have to get a first down. He goes, yeah, we mentioned it, too. You know what's incredible is he was standing on that sideline with all those other recruits a year ago for this game. And now Scalbro goes for 10 more. The Ruggs catch was 47 yards on that previous play. And think about it. True freshman Jerry Judy and true freshman Henry Ruggs running that pass route in that thing. And they've gotten some playing time here because Alabama has blown a lot of people out, allowing some of the young players to get PT time. First and goal now for Bama. Just inside the eight. Jalen Hurts keeps it. Gets to the four. Devin White made the stop along with Lockature. Alabama, the Verizon Red Zone offense for the Tide this year, 42 trips, 29 of them touchdowns. Well, in last year's game, LSU had a third quarter goal line stand where they stopped Alabama on fourth down. They could use one here. Look at Fitzpatrick back out of the tent at least. Second goal at the four. Toss fake to Scarborough. Hurts on the throw to the end zone. Touchdown, Herb Smith. What a great read by Herb Smith on the play. Instead of to keep running across the field, he feels the open area and settles down. He's at tight end right here. Watch him come and just kind of feel this open area and stop. Little play action pass, comes across, feels the open spot, puts his hands up, and Jalen hands it off to him from about 10 yards away. Papanastis in for the point after. 6.08 remaining first quarter. Papanastis extra point is right down the middle. Well, I got to say, after the upsets today, with Barkley at Penn State and Barrett at Ohio State, could Jalen Hurts be sneaking into the Heisman story? I don't know, but he was four for four for 80 yards, including that long run. That Houdini escape, he made it, and then the post route down the middle to the freshman Ruggs, and then he finishes it off. The threat of the run, which he ran just the previous play, that's enough to allow the tight end to find the spot and a touchdown. What a drive. 90 yards, nine plays, four minutes, seven nothing, Alabama. What do you do if you're LSU? You know, you can't panic, but you remember how many yards you've run against these guys the last three years. Yeah. You start thinking, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Let's not panic, but what do we do? Got a pretty decent kick return. That'll help the cause. So LSU will work from the 39. Etling in the shotgun. A quick throw to the outside. Who's going to get it? It's Harrison. Yep. Ronnie Harrison with the interception. Boy, it's a matchup you got to love. 
You've got your strong safety matched up. They believe Ronnie Harrison is not a great cover guy. He's playing in Minka Fitzpatrick's spot. They go right at him with Darius Geis. Not a great route by Geis. And Ronnie Harrison, the leading tackler on this Alabama team, makes the first big play for this Alabama defense. Geis was trying to fight for it, but with that somersault, it was Ronnie Harrison's ball pretty much all the way. And so the first big defensive play, he gets the championship belt for the time being. 36th straight game with a takeaway. He took his helmet off, still on the well, field. Yeah, he did. Ooh, big collision with Josh Jacobs. And, and every time you do that, you put it at risk. You know, sometimes you don't get seen. You kind of blend into the sideline, and, <laughs> and nobody sees it. And sometimes you get called. Kind of hard to blend in in this first quarter. There's some hitting going on in Tuscaloosa. And a one, Alabama. 7-0 lead over the Tigers of LSU will return to Tuscaloosa after this message and a word from your local station. Set to start the second quarter in Tuscaloosa. Second-ranked Alabama with a 7-0 lead over the 19th-ranked Tigers of LSU. And they've got the ball just inside the Tiger 35-yard line. And they're coming after him. Going to be a short game for Scarborough as we start the second quarter. We welcome you back to Tuscaloosa. Brad Nestle and Gary Danielson. A little bit off the football thing here. Today. Well, not really. Yep. The guy that wore this headset and starred on this show for about two decades, our good friend Vern Lundquist, had back surgery this morning in Vail, Colorado. The good news is everything went beautifully. Millions of people watching, but one important guy in Vail watching. And what I say as we watch this on third down call, Oh man, he and a first that down one. throw to Calvin Ridley, yeah. first and goal. Nice protection that time. No pressure from Key or Thompson. Short set by Ridley. Remember, the threat of going inside is there, and he caught it to the outside. Pick up a 24. Funny how that works. When you can go right or left, it's a lot harder to cover you. Ridley really runs nice routes. He does. At the nine yard line. And heading to the end zone is Bo Scarborough. Touchdown. Big Bo for the seventh time finds the end zone on the ground. Now we do a lot of talking all the time about Jonah Williams, but on the right side of that line, Lester Cotton and Matt Womack are really coming on. They might be the two most powerful offensive linemen they have at the point of the attack. They don't pull them a lot, but boy, that looked nice going right on that play. Jalen Hurts picked them apart, throwing the ball, and then Bo Scarborough, the nightmare from a year ago, continues to impress. Danny Etling pacing that sideline is going to be in a two touchdown hole when LSU takes the field on offense. Because after the interception, it was Hurts to Ridley. That set him up first and goal. Bo Scarborough did the rest from nine yards out for number nine. Touchdown, Alabama. 37 yard drive four plays less than a minute 14 nothing Alabama I want to finish our thought we talked to Vern Lundquist yesterday the whole crew and we talked to Nancy his wife today everything went beautifully at his operation the last thing he said to me with a voicemail last night he said we've been with you every step of the way have a great call I don't know if you're listening Vern but thanks a lot <laughs> well, and, and I've been challenging him all year that you got to get ready for the Masters get to That's that right. 16th tower and you know we got a guy here tonight Justin Thomas that you could be calling one of those epic calls that you make all the time the whole SEC conference loves to watch the Masters and we'll be seeing that guy right there and we hope to be seeing burn get healthy big guy two yards deep Edwards Elair will take a knee here's a jet sweep Russell Gage Alabama waiting on it but he still makes four yards out of it Sean Dion Hamilton ran him down and one of the things is you watch Russell Gage run this play 
is when you're defending this Matt Canada LSU offense, it's almost like an invert option offense. You know, in the option offense, you have to do a assignment inside out with the fullback and then the pitch is the last phase. Well, in this offense, the threat of the jet sweep is the first phase. If that's there, they're going to give the ball. Then everything flows off of that. So even if it's not working, you have to continue to run the jet sweep. Again, they do the tackle over to the right side. Gage with the jet sweep. They'll try it going the other way. Stop starts and goes down at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard out of it. What you have to do is anticipate where the motion's going to be outside. Don't not where he's at. Anticipate where he's going to be. Remember, he's getting a full head of steam. You cannot let him outflank you just by alignment. You have to assume that when he gets the ball, he's going to be outside of you right away. Perfectly defended that time. Florida, Alabama. Florida didn't get wide enough when they played these guys, and that cost them several times. Third down at four. They empty the backfield. Etling throws complete. And it's first down, Stefan Sullivan. Yeah, and, and that's what they need. If they could keep the ball a little bit, make some first downs. Again, watching the tape from a year ago, Danny had about two or three of those a year ago in a tight football game that he missed. That's the one. Just pitch and catch, just move the chains, keep your defense on the sideline. Like you said, a year ago, he only had 92 yards throwing it. No touchdowns and one interception. He's off to a much better start tonight. Has his team at the 44 yard line. Straight give Darius Geis. And straight up the middle, Geis goes to midfield. And remember, they're running that ball right at a true freshman. Chadrick Charles, number 77. Garrett Broomfield, number 78, is the left guard. But two true freshmen, two of them are playing for this LSU offense. When you talk to Ed Orgeron, he said, we have to build up our inner guy. Our, our offense and defensive linemen are not LSU that we're used to seeing. Second and five, again, Gage in motion. And a bobble, and he got the handoff to him anyway. Tries to step on this time. It doesn't work. Anthony Averett said, no, not this time. Brings up third down. In a way, oh, boy, nice ball handling. He kind of dropped it as Brad told you. He was lucky to get it to him, wasn't he? Yep. Third and medium again. I'll tell you, Jeremy Pruitt loves to blitz in these situations. Bring five. That lane rolls to throw. Fires a dart wow, complete wow. to Chark. Beautiful. Chark caught a big pass a year ago, maybe the biggest of the game for LSU when they had trouble moving the ball against Marlon Humphrey. And boy, he gets wide open on this. Get him out of the pocket. Nice pin block to get him out of the pocket and a slip and a fall that time by the Alabama defender. That's what kept it so wide open. So Adling with that 21 yard pickup is seven out of 12 for 80 yards. Yeah, that, he's got that's LSU acceptable. Down to the 31. Yeah, that's acceptable. LSU will take that. And he's going to throw it out in the flat, complete to Chark, who he faked the handoff to. Short game. You know, Brad, one of the things that when you watch the Ole Miss game, the LSU pass receivers, even though they gained 600 yards, the wide receivers did not catch a pass. But in this offense, you cannot get caught up in that because through eight games, the wide receivers have 94 touches. They're getting a lot more rushes, only 53 receptions, but 41 rush attempts. Whereas a year ago, they had 73 receptions and only seven rush attempts. A completely different offense. Darrell Williams had over 100 yards receiving two weeks ago in the win over Ole Miss. He hasn't touched it yet tonight. Various guys tries to spin his way in and he runs right into the doctor for Sean Evans. Darius Geis, who had 276 yards a couple of weeks ago and went over Ole Miss, became the first SEC player to have over 250 three times. That's pretty strong, including a career-high 285 against AM last year. Yeah, and his, his season was really spoiled a little bit by an injury early in the year. He's just coming on. His knee is just now getting healthy to, to play the way the uh, Tiger fans were hoping we'd see from him this year. And here's another third down. 
Need to get to the 20. Etling fires on the sideline. Tart made the catch. Wow. Levi Wallace was right there, but a great throw and catch. Absolutely a great throw. Well, you couldn't have handed that ball off any better than that. Levi Wallace, a tactician at corner. Look at that coverage. That's what you have to do. That's what Clemson did to LSU. Excuse me, to Alabama. They had guys covered. They just completed the passes. Guys got it down to about the three. E.J. Chark, the number one receiver, the guy that called the flash. What a Boy. throw. Catch. And he had that huge play to turn around the football team against the Florida game with the punt return. Remember that. Yep. He comes out. Second and goal. Couldn't have dialed this up. A 10-play drive so far and three third-down completions on this drive. John David Moore is in front of Geis in an eye backfield. Throw to the corner. Incomplete intended for Torrey Carter, who we saw catch a touchdown pass in the Florida game as well. Incomplete. Uh, and I, I really impressed with Sean Deion Hamilton, the inside linebacker. Hurt his knee a year ago, but he's so smart. He was about a half a step behind. Then he read the tight end. That's his man. He goes for it full speed and makes the defended play. He's the other Alabama player that's a semifinalist for the Buckus Award. Alabama's red zone defense best in the conference as they are in most defensive categories third and goal at the four Etling looks right wants to come back to the left throws broken up at the goal line Averett knocked it away well he did try to go right and this time Levi Wallace had the play taken away to the right side he rolls back left and nothing there might have had a chance to throw the ball to guys, but that's really being picky. To throw the ball well against Alabama, though, sometimes you got to be picky. Not a lot of open players. Connor Culp has hit seven straight field goals. This will be a 21 yard attempt. And he makes it eight straight just inside the left upright. Yeah. If that was three yards back, farther, that wouldn't have made it. <laughs> As it is, they go on a long drive and have to settle for three. And, and the great news for LSU is they did it on third down. Bama in front, but LSU on the board. It's just getting good. Yeah. This has a feeling like 2007 when two loss LSU got in there. Remember, LSU will get the ball to start the second half. If they can get a stop here, that's how you get back in the game. Hurts gives it off. No, he keeps it. And Jalen Hurts into the secondary. Great fake to Bo Scarborough. He got me anyway, and he got some of the LSU defenders. And Help if, it knocked him off his And pins. if you're an LSU defender, you have to go for the fake with Bo Scarborough. He tore you up the last two drives of last year's game. At the end of the game, when Alabama had a 12-play drive for a touchdown on a 15-play drive for a field goal, it was Hurts and Bo Scarborough. It was actually the breakout game for Bo Scarborough. And now they're fake. The flare pass out to him, wanted to come back to Ridley, and the ball was tipped. Rashad Lawrence, the big fella, got it. So they're part of the way to their stop. Rashad Lawrence, when he's healthy, he's another one of those guys that can match up with this offensive, physical offensive line for Alabama. He's had trouble with both ankles, but when he's healthy, he's a load in there. Second down and 10 from the 43. Hurts, straight shot in and out of the hands of Devontae Smith. Well, it's hard not to like Greedy Williams, number 29. You know, he stays with plays, and he also has the great thing that every defensive back loves. Luck. He has a little luck in his side. <laughs> So that say, one should Smith have had that one, yes. yes. And Smith might have the best teams on this Alabama team. He does not drop a lot of passes. Let's see if LSU can come up with that stop that Gary's talking about. Third and 10. 23-49. Can they make a play? 
49 trying to sneak through there. He at least flushed Hurts back up into the middle. And Jalen Hurts heading to the sideline, yeah. but he's tagged out of bounds by Corey Thompson. How about that? 49 flushes him and 23 finishes it. There's Key coming up the middle, and when Hurts takes off, it's 23 that tracks him all the way across the field. Totally. He was lined up on the left side. He was not blitzing. He was somewhat spying. He was playing off, but he knew instantly where Hurts was going to go, and he got up there before Hurts could get the first down. Scott comes in to punt again. He would just like to keep it out of that guy's hands and put it down inside the 10 somewhere. Man, does he get the ball in the yes, air? Yes, he huh? does. Well, he's like six foot six, you know, with that yeah. arc that he's got to punt. Geis bounces it outside this time. Got about six. This is basically now garbage yards because uh, I think both teams, listen, LSU doesn't want to make a critical mistake to end the half, and Alabama, if they'd have got a stop, they'd have called timeout, but uh, they don't want to give this LSU offense any life going into halftime. We're down to what we expect to be the last play. Yeah, in this situation, you wonder why they would even run the ball. If you're going to give up, give up, take a knee. Netling will be under center. Gives it off. Well, Geist got another first down, but that ends the first half. Levi Wallace made the final stop of the second quarter. Well, I thought they needed two stars. Arden Key came through for LSU, yep. and I think Danny Entling might have played his best half of football as an LSU football player. That we've seen him for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So they head to the locker room, trailing, but very much in the thick of the football game. Alabama having won 31 of their last 32 here at the stadium had the lead at halftime and Nick is with Alec. Coach you said your team hasn't had to handle a lot of adversity this season now you have it how do you expect them to respond. Well we'll see you know we can't get off the field on third down very well on defense which really hurt us in a couple drives and you know we're not running the ball with any consistency and we're getting in a long, lot of yard, long yardage situations on third down so it's not the way you need to play winning football so we got to get things cleaned up for the second half. Speaking of adversity how severe is Minka's injury and how can your defense compensate for it. Well you know we're, we're, we're going to have to evaluate that at halftime we tried to play him just in dime there and on the goal line where we know he's not going to have to run deep, but we'll see what happens. Thank you, Coach. Right, thanks. Well, even without Mickey, they hold LSU to just a field goal in the first half. 14 to 3 here. A lot of other action going on around the country earlier today and yet to come. And Adam Zucker and the guys in New York have got it all for you in the Geico halftime report. Zuck. It's been tough for both offenses as you took a look at the full moon over Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. We Start the third quarter with the number 19 team in the country handling the ball first and they will handle it from the 25 yard line. So it is a night where you turn back the clocks. LSU's trying to turn back Alabama right now and they're they're hanging in there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you look at the stats, they, you know, they're rushing for more yards, time of possession. Uh, their quarterbacks having a good football game. The really difference of the football game, obviously, the Bama defense is real. Right. But Jalen Hurts has been the difference. I mean, that spin move when he got away from the sack, he's thrown a couple good balls, the scramble down there on that one drive. Jalen Hurts has been the difference in the football game to this point. He led him on that long touchdown drive of 90 yards where he was perfect throwing it and picked up a huge first down with his legs. Let's see what Danny Etling and LSU can do to start the third quarter. Darius Geis, no gain, might have gotten a yard. Let's check in with Allie. Guys, I talked to Coach O. I said, what'd you tell the team at the half? He said, I told him we are just as good as them. We're playing toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I said, how do you get more points on the bar? He said, Allie, it's easy. We have to convert. We have to get open. We have to stop making mistakes. It's simple football. We don't want to overcomplicate this, and that's the message I try to give to the team. I think they've done a real nice job throwing the ball. This is a wildcat. Etling's at wide receiver way out here. And Williams keeps it. Oof, did he run into Evans? And he actually got the better of that, I guess. At least he got a couple more yards at the end of it. And what happens is with the new rule, the offensive linemen are allowed to come from behind and push on the play after it gets stopped. 
gets stopped then watch from behind on the play it was was it Sean Dion Hamilton it's that's down on the play it is that laying out in the flat to Williams trying to make a couple guys miss and can't Alabama swarms defensively Keith Holcomb who just came on in for Sean Dion Hamilton got over there to help make the stop you want to watch how to play defense watch this Alabama defense triangulate the defender three players now what are you going to do three defenders right there Tony Brown Sean Evans and Levi Wallace know where to go you have to be more aggressive against this defense now Evans is limping off a little bit here's the punt Fair catch taken by Marks. And if they lose Evans, they've already lost three starters. Fitzpatrick, Mosley, and Hamilton. Linebacking core is not. Fourth. Yeah. Linebacking core is not that deep. That pretty good. Even though it's always deep, they can't lose that many guys. Jalen Hurts. No, it's it's. Hurts with a run all the way to the 41. Yeah, when remember late in the game a year ago, the last two drive, that's when Jalen Hurts took over carrying the ball. Wow, look at that hole. Yeah, that is called a hole. That's a canyon. <laughs> that's a canyon. First down at the 41. 15 yard romp by Jalen Hurts. And Dave Aranda said, Our game plan is to stop Hurts running the ball. But what they've done a nice job is stopping everybody. Damian Harris might have gotten three out of that. Donnie Alexander helped on the stop. A previous run. When you play quarterback the way he plays quarterback, he looks for guys to hit. <laughs> From the 49th, second and 18. Blitz coming off the corner. Hurt straight down the middle. Throws a strike to Foster. So they get some of it back. Yeah, now if I'm an LSU defensive back, I'm understanding that my pass rush is giving them problems. Now, do you sit on a couple of plays? Squat on a throw? Hurts got away momentarily, throws on the run, and he tucked one in there somehow oh, to Foster. That was one, as you said, he squeezed this baby in there. Rolls out and throws one at is in between four LSU defenders. It's actually Cam Sims. Wow. I don't know how that thing found eyes to get through there, but it did. First down at the 25. Play fake. Here comes the pressure again. Hurts going to just get rid of this thing. And Calvin Ridley is going to be frustrated on this one because he turned his defender completely around on the play. He had Williams, Greedy Williams, and watch him turn his defender on this play right here. He's got him one on one, nobody in the middle. Bam, wide open, mm. six yard cushion on the 10 yard line. Hurts taking his time with Harris with him in the backfield. Same Thinks play. Down Same the middle. Play. Calvin Ridley. He's got a first and goal at this time. I guess Brian Dable saw what I drew up, right? <laughs> Same play. This much space. Look how much space he has on Kelvin right here. Easy play, easy pitch and catch. 21 yards to the three. And now it's Hurts. Touchdown, Alabama. Well, if you're a Tiger fan, you're saying we might have got a great break getting the holding penalty. And after that, they pick it up. The pass in traffic was the big play that kept it going. Papanast is in for the point after. And up and good. And courtesy of number two, they tack out another touchdown. Well, 
as Brad called it, and perfectly, he snuck this one in there to Cam Sims. Devin White was diving for the ball and just missed it. And then Ridley, who was open the play before, gets a repeat. And the next play is Jalen Hurts on the keeper. 56 yards, seven plays. Hurts does it himself. Seventh time he scored on the ground. 21-3 tied. 53rd touchdown that Jalen Hurts has been responsible for in just his second year. Look at the smile on his face. He is one cool customer. Yeah, he's got a blood pressure of 90 <laughs> over 40. <laughs> <laughs> Down to the five-yard line on the return. Nick Brossette. Nice return, but a flag down. Apparently, they picked up the flag. No penalty, so it's first down at the 33. Straight drop, bootleg, throw out to Geis. Looking for a block for Morrow, and he got a little bit of one. And look at that run after the catch. There he is, Geis picks up what looks like a first down. This is what Alabama forces teams to do. You know, we've seen it occasionally, you know, when you they play a quarterback that has that type of game. You're not going to beat them with simple plays or conservative plays. You have to match them physically, number one. And then number two, you have to go for it. They're playing man to man and you have to throw the ball a little bit, throw some slants over the middle of the field and go after them defensively. Darrell Williams in the Wildcats straight up the middle. And the Tiger, Darrell Williams in the Wildcat might take it all the way to the one. There's the big play they've been looking for. Yeah, it, they had success earlier with the Wildcat, and this time, Hootie Jones comes in a great block that time by Will Clapp, number 64, the center. They spotted it to two. Etling back. Shoulder throws incomplete intended for Sullivan. What an answer this would be for Huge. LSU. Huge. The fans that, that show up at Brian Denny Stadium are hoping for a touchdown here with 153 remaining in the quarter. As we say, you bring the whole package when you play this Alabama defense. That's Carter in motion. They give it to Williams. He got him there, and he got him in. Touchdown, LSU. I think it was John David Moore, number 18. And Williams followed into the end zone that time. He's playing fullback this time. Gets a key block against Keith Holcomb, and they stuff it in. How about that? A Wildcat. They're looking for something different, and they found it with the Wildcat big play. Connor Kopp in for the point after. An all-important touchdown. LSU just scored. And almost the whole thing was Darrell Williams, who had a 100-yard rushing and receiving game a couple of weeks ago. He takes this one on the Wildcat for 54 yards. That set him up at the two-yard line. He did the rest. 21 to 10. Big touchdown drive by LSU. Puts him right back in the thick of things as we are nearing the end of the third quarter. 21 to 10, Alabama. Well, think about it. LSU has now rushed for almost 160, 159 yards. Their longest rush they had a year ago was 18 yards. <laughs> they just ripped one there for, what, 50-plus? 50 54. Yep. Cameron Gamble's kick. Ruggs will take a knee. Alabama will bring it out to the 25 on offense. Alabama's had a lot of guys go down in this game to injury. Nika Fitzpatrick, a hamstring. Shawnee on Hamilton out with the knees in the locker room. Mosley has come back in since that ankle. We don't know how much he'll play, and Evans also. So Yeah, Minka Fitzpatrick's playing half speed out there. Yeah. He doesn't even look like himself. Jalen Hurts as Bo Scarborough flares out, gets it to him in the flat. Oh, nice tackle. And it's Arden Key again. Yes. And Scarborough lets Devin White have it at the end of the play. 
I mean, uh, Devin White was heavily recruited by Alabama to come here. It was between Alabama and LSU. He stayed home, played for LSU. And Brian Dable said he's watched tape of eight games and numerous teams besides the eight teams, and he's the best football player he's seen all year on tape. That's saying a lot. Yep. Here comes a blitz. Hurts in trouble. Got rid of it at the last second. In and out of the hands of Judy. What a play by Jalen Hurts. He had to relocate. Throws to Judy at the last second. Puts it right on his face mask. And it's dropped by Judy. Watch this. He has to relocate up. Then he finds and puts it right there. That ball has to be caught. Can't do it any better than that if you're a quarterback. So that's third and ten. Hurts again. Thompson pressuring from behind. He'll keep it. Try to head to the stick. Might have gotten a late block. Did he get the first down? All right, there's no sliding when you're Jalen Hurts, right? I mean, we a couple weeks ago as a crackback block that time. Not a crackback because that would be illegal. But Jerry Judy comes back and gets the cleanup block, turns his body. It, he did not. That was not a targeting. It was a good block. Got Donnie Alexander. He did, but it was completely legal. And the way he turned is really one of the things I advocate that college football needs to have the players do on these peelback blocks. You have to understand how dangerous they are and turn your back. It's still effective. Great block by Judy. First down at the 36. Scarborough on a cutback run up the middle and big bow for 10. And again, this is where the Bo Scarborough train started to roll a year ago. In the fourth quarter of this game, Scarborough started to be physical and he carried it on all the way into the first half of that Clemson game until he got hurt. He stays in there on a first down at the 47. Give it to him again. Good defense. Whoa. Well, they're going to come and get him, but he threw one guy off. That was Devin White. Yep. But then White got help from his friends. Yeah, but it was good enough, and it's going to stop it. And this LSU team is going to get to the fourth quarter with a football game. And that's what they wanted. Ed Argeron's been preaching that all week. Stay in the game, get to the fourth quarter, and then we got a shot. We'll see who's got the biggest shot in the final 15 minutes. We played three. Second ranked Alabama 21, number 19 LSU 10. We'll return to Tuscaloosa right after this message and a word from your local station. We start the fourth quarter at Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Number two Alabama with a 21 10 lead. And the ball at their own 49 yard line. Jalen Hurts, quarterback draw, cuts it outside. Nice gain and into LSU territory. Fourth quarter is underway. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, Allie LaForce. Jalen Hurts was the difference at halftime. You said he's still the difference through three he quarters. He is, and, and apropos, it's going to be third down here because Alabama's 43% third down in the year, but only four for 10 in this game. And three of them have been big plays by Hurts on third down. The scrambles, the tight throw, it's been his ball game on third down. They listen, four for 10, three of them almost on busted plays. Third and four here. Wants to throw, does, fires a strike complete to Smith. His uh, tight end. And great protection that time from the offensive line. Allowed the tight end to be able to get downfield and get open. And you can see the LSU players talking to each other. Calvin Ridley goes in motion and frees it up and allows the busted coverage. Two guys take Ridley. On third and four, they got 21 on that pass play, and then they go back to Scarborough. But what a clean pocket he had. Remember all game it has been either 23 or 49 or sometimes Richard Lawrence or once in a while Devin White number 40 putting the pressure on Hurts that time a beautiful clean pocket. Second down and eight now at the LSU 23. Alabama threatening again Hurts. I think somebody got a hand on that but he still got it to the end zone and it's dropped by Smith. Looked like somebody maybe hit him as he threw. That ball came out a little funny. I'll tell you, if you get a scouting report from the Alabama people about 
Devonte Smith is he never drops him. <laughs> well, and this tonight. time actually the hand from battle got there a little early in slow motion. It could have been called pass interference because there was no way that Smith could catch that ball because battle got his hand in there a little early and got away with it. So third down and long again. And Scarborough comes up to talk to the offensive line. Throw is incomplete. Good coverage. Really good coverage by Tolliver. That previous play when he threw the end zone, Gary, I thought it looked funny when he let it go and then at the end. Yeah, but it was. Play. But it ended up being perfect, and it was Battle who raked. Smith before he caught the ball and in a perfect world it's a tough call because it happens that's super slow motion we've got the best slow motion cameras we got that's all right. here right there <laughs> just for that reason right there Andy Papanastas is 13 out of 16 this is a 41 yarder and he drills it and I mean drills it right down the middle tack three more on for Alabama 13-25 to play. Tied have to settle for three, but they're up two touchdowns. So J.K. Scott, who's been punting well all night, set to tee it up. And listen, it's still just a two-possession game if you're LSU. You know, you, you cannot now say, okay, uh, Danny Edlings, you're now Burt Jones, and we're going to let you throw the ball <laughs> the LSU All-American. They have to manage him. He's had a good football game, but they've managed him well. Scott hits this one to the near corner, and Edwards Alaire will take a knee. They'll bring it out to the 25. So that's where Danny Edling and the LSU offense will start things off with 13 25 remaining. LSU in desperate need of a score on this drive. Darius Geis. Nice run, tough run. Well, you know, the excellence of this Alabama run here seven times they've had an eight no start and only five other teams have done it now six with Georgia right one two three four five other teams Georgia's done it this year and only one has won the national title Auburn can Georgia do it because usually Alabama ends up beating them <laughs> here's that like trying to get it to his tight end it's incomplete well, here we go. Badly needed. Under nine minutes to go. Can they pull off another third down conversion? Etling looking left all the way and then fires on the sideline. And he got it. Yes, he did. Complete. Over to Derek Dillon. Might be the best throw that Danny Etling made in this football game. Back shoulder throws are nice, but sticking it in downfield in between the zone is what the quarterback coaches love. When you do that, you stand in the pocket and deliver a 35, 40 yard throw sideways and stick it right on the numbers. That's impressive. They pick up 16. He threw it cross field, but as far as Length down the field, they got it to the 38 yard line. First down. Darrell Williams in motion. Comes back the other way. They're going to give it to Geis, though, on the inside. That's having both your tailbacks in there, faking the sweep to one and giving it straight up to the other. It does. And then the, the third phase of it is that offensive line has to knock somebody off the ball. And that time, with all the juice going sideways, that defensive line for Alabama won. And that's what, when you went to practice Thursday, that's what I heard all day. I stood behind the defense because I was so curious of what they were going to do. And Jeremy Pruitt was preaching to the inside linebackers, the defensive linemen, just do your job inside. The secondary will handle those uh, whiplash dash jet sweeps. Atley, plenty of time. Fires long, incomplete intended for Derek Dillon. They had a couple opportunities in the second half that just one was a bit overthrown and one a bit underthrown, but just can't quite come up with the big play. Remember this in the third quarter, he had Shark going down and just overthrew it by about two yards to the outside. And then he had Shark again. 
and just under threw it by about four or five yards. Two opportunities and didn't get it. You don't get a lot of chances against Alabama. Third down at seven. They've got to worry about the first down first here, but they've also got to worry about only having seven minutes left to go. Etling again. Pocket now starting to collapse, and he's going down, and it's Deron Payne bringing it. The pain, that is. Dylan Moses is there with it. Loss of 11. You could tell by the way Epling was moving around that it must have been good coverage. Levi Wallace at the bottom. Down the middle, no one there. You can't throw it deep. There's a safety behind the guy in the middle of the field. Epling has to go left, and there's nobody on the left side of the field. Nobody to throw it to. So they did pick up one first down. They wasted. I don't I shouldn't say wasted. They had the ball about four minutes or so, but they didn't get anywhere as far as scoring. Fair catch taken by Marks at about the 39 yard line. Alabama with the ball back. 622 to go. That's all they have to burn right now. Jalen Hurts has been their star as he's been for two years. Their defense pretty darn good too. Hey, the offensive coordinator and the head coach in that home. And I know exactly what Nick Saban's telling them. Right now, I want to win on offense. I want to put this game. Let's, if we want to be national champs, there's going to come a game when the other team has a Deshaun Watson that we're having trouble with. When we got six minutes to go with the game and we got the lead, we have to put the game away. We didn't do that and it hurt us before. We can do it right now. That's the type of things you do. You coach forward. Listen, and the test is not easy. You're going up against a high-level defense. This is a great test to see if this Alabama offense can finish out this game on the field. First down at the 39. It's Bo Scarborough offset in the backfield with Hurts. And Bo gets the call. Trying to follow his blockers. Good puts defense. his hand right on their backs. Yep. Good defense. Successful play. I really admire this LSU football team. They're a little bit undermanned from what I'm used to seeing LSU talent in the past. Ed Orgeron has talked about it. We need a big recruiting class of, of defensive and offensive linemen. But boy, they are playing a good football game. The last month, you can't take anything away from Absolutely their fight, not. can you? Nope. Oh. Second. It, and the only guys that believed were those guys on that team. Because the, most LSU fans had turned it off after they lost to Troy. Arden Key in a stand-up spot right there on the right side of the line, trying to tee off. But Scarborough goes the other way, and it's a nice play by Heron again. Devin White, Arden Key, two of the key players. Devin White, not going to lie, Coach Saban said, if you go there, we're just going to have to beat you every year. A lot of people play for different reasons. For me, I'm playing for the state of Louisiana, which is where he's from. But as Gary said, almost was a Crimson Tide player. But man, he came in leading the conference in tackles. And he's all over the field again tonight. And he was the guy that called out his teammates after the Troy loss. Got to study more. Yeah, that's right. You can't mail it in. A lot of true freshmen on this football team, and they didn't understand how tough it is to play at this level. Third and nine. This would be a huge conversion for Hurts. And it's tipped. Oh, that nice was play close. by Dante Jackson. That was close. That ball's a half a foot lawyer, lower. Could have been a one-handed stab. A gutsy throw to the outside. If it gets over, might be completed to the outside, but defended very nicely. We always talk about Alabama's defense being so good. That's the sixth time LSU is forced in Alabama three and out. Yeah, and, and they're still in the football game. You know, you score, you go outside kick, because you only have one timeout, or two timeouts left, excuse yeah. me. Scott, oh man. This one's even higher than the other seven. Back to around the nine-yard line. Remember, all year, he has not had one punt even returned. It came close, but they had a penalty before. 51-yard punt. He's buried LSU in a hole again as we go to New York. 439 remaining in the fourth quarter here. All right, now Nick has to go to his defense and say, okay. We're going to win with we defense. Win with <laughs> There's always another mess. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Headline from his own goal line. 
Throws complete to Russell Gage. Short game, clock running down. It'll be under four and a half. Miles Brennan in the game. A little better thrower, getting a lot of, uh, of good vibes from practice. When you talk to both Matt Canada and Ed Ogeron, they said he's going to be a gifted player for us when the time comes. Short throw over the middle of Geis, trying to change directions. Does get the first down. I mean, Miles Brennan is more of a pure passer. There's no doubt about it. Edling took a big hit on the last series, remember? I wonder if he's a little bit stunned. Under four to go. Brennan in trouble. Evades the rush going to his left. Now he's going to keep it and slide for about four. And the clock continues to move. Trying to get Stefan Sullivan set up way down at the bottom of your screen. Brennan throws to Geis. A little crossing route. Darius fighting for another first down. Is about a yard shy. Alabama is willing to give up short yards to eat time off the clock. They're waiting for one big play, a sack, to turn it around. Geis gets the first down that they needed. Breaks out for about four more. Rashawn Evans finally brought him down. We're under three minutes. Here's a freshman trying to run a hurry up to get a quick touchdown. Not easy, not in Tuscaloosa. Brennan in trouble, going down. Like I said, he plays soft zone. You keep it in front of him, and you understand that Miles Brennan might be a good quarterback someday, but that's not Deshaun Watson back there. <laughs> And it's funny when we had uh, Evans, Sean Evans talking, I go, how you like that to Sean Watson now? He said, I've been watching. <laughs> Let's get a quick update on Danny Etling. Allie? Guys, there's nothing physically wrong with Danny Etling. The team confirming with me that he is healthy, but it was purely a coach's decision that he missed too many assignments, and they felt the need to shake it up. Mm. Wow. He just made his best throw of the night prior, I thought, to the outside, and gets benched. At any rate, it's Miles Brennan, the true freshman, on a second and 16. He throws deep sideline, and that's out of bounds. Yeah, again, throwing to the tight end on those is very difficult. They just don't eat up that yards that you're expecting, and uh, those defensive backs close on those tight ends. So that that's deep down the field. Third down and a bunch. They're running out of time, and they're running out of downs to make something happen. Boy, if you would have told Ed Orgeron that they were going to outgain Florida with two minutes and 30 seconds to go in the game, he would have been, Bama, excuse me, outgain Bama. They'd be saying, we're winning. He throws this one behind his intended receiver, and that's fourth down. I mean, you go against Alabama here the way they've been, you know, throttled on offense the last couple times, and you have more yards and still only produce 10 points, and most of that came on a Wildcat-type play. Right. Yep. One big play was a 54-yard run by Darrell Williams, and then a two-yarder by Williams for the score, their only touchdown. Alabama came in only giving up nine points, eight points per game. Boy, They're right about on their average. Hard to believe it's a two, two touchdown game, which means it's a game and you change quarterbacks. This is maybe his last chance and he's not going to get a chance. Down he goes, Dylan Moses. Alabama takes over. That's how you feel when it when you've got long yardage, you just rush four guys, you sit in zone, you understand you got a young quarterback. He's probably not going to see the alleys that are necessary to stick the ball in and you finish off the football game. 
LSU could only stop it one time as well. They're down to one timeout. Well, Alabama set a record for the SEC in their first five SEC wins. They won by a total of 200 points. And, Brad, we were there for, I think, 150 of them. Yeah, right? well, yeah we were. <laughs> <laughs> so this one was a little tighter, but they still win it. If you like to play the comparison game now that you're a Georgia Bulldog fan and they're going to the championship, Georgia beat Tennessee and Vandy by an aggregate 8, 86 to 14. Alabama beat those two by 106 to 7. The Bulldogs going into today won their five SEC games by 32 point average. Bama won its five by an average of 40. Yeah. Well, I will say this even though Georgia is in the SEC championship, okay? They still play Auburn, Georgia Tech, and then whoever they play. If they lose a game, that means they have no margin of error. Right. If they go into the SEC Championship undefeated, they might lose and get in. Damian Harris, no, it's Jalen Hurts keeping it, and Corey Thompson flagged down, and he runs him down. Don't have any more respect than anybody in this league than Corey Thompson. His sixth season, two years he sat out with injuries, come back one of the Personal best players foul. on the field. The face mask, 23 defense. Hell, he's half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. Yeah, just <laughs> It's funny, he grabs it, and then he took his hands up like I didn't do anything. And, and then, then he goes, still well, I still, the tackle. I still got a tackle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you said, missed two complete seasons, 14 and 16. When he started at LSU, some of the guys he's playing with were in eighth grade. Eighth grade. How about that? I think I was in my third or fourth year. <laughs> <laughs> Down to the final. First and goal at the seven. And they don't really need to run the play again. They could take a knee if they want. Give it to Damian Harris, who got a yard, maybe two. Now LSU is going to fall to six and three and three and two in the conference. Alabama is going to remain perfect at nine and zero oh and six and zero. Oh. And will they be number one or will Georgia be number one next week when the rankings come out on Tuesday? Doesn't really matter really until December third, but it's fun to talk about, I guess, for the fans. Yeah, but Ed Orgeron got his team to finish a good football game here. They were not embarrassed. Now they get Arkansas at home and then at Tennessee, they can still have a very successful season compared to where they were after that Troy game. No doubt about that. So Jalen Hurts going to keep that ball and head to the locker room. He's the guy that created enough offense tonight for Alabama to win their 23rd straight conference game. And their 32nd win in the last 33 here at Bryant Denny Stadium. Well, the 82nd edition between these two teams was another hard hitting battle, without a doubt. LSU doesn't have quite enough offense. And the winning coach is with Allie LaForce. Coach, you said this was going to come down to how the team handled hard. How do you grade the way they responded to the challenges of this game? Well, hey, you got to give LSU a lot of credit, man. They played a great game. They had a good plan. Their players had played hard. They were physical. It was a tough game. But I'm proud of our players with the way they responded in the second half and did what we had to do to win the game. This is a great win for us. Your team suffered a lot of injuries, specifically on defense, and not just any defender, but the leaders of your defense. How'd they overcome it? Well, the other guys stepped up and played pretty well. They made a few mistakes out there, especially on a long run when they were in Wildcat. But we'll, we'll, we'll get better. I hope we get some of these guys back. Thank you, Coach. Right, thank you. So Alabama, number two this week. Will they be number one next week? Georgia, number one this week. Will they be number two next Tuesday night? Those two were heading for a collision course maybe December 2nd in Atlanta. How big would that be? Don't forget, big doubleheader next week. Florida, South Carolina. Then we'll be in the Plains as top-ranked Georgia takes on the Auburn Tigers. For Gary and Allie, Brad Nessler saying so long from Bryant-Denny Stadium, Alabama still perfect at 9-0 with another win tonight at home.